I'm going to spoil this entire review by saying that if you're looking for a mid-sized pure electric hatchback that's about £35,000, then you can forget the VW ID3, the Kia e Nero, or even the Nissan Leaf and just buy that. That is the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric. That's it. You can stop watching now. But if you want to know why you should buy it, then you're going to have to stick with me. Ha! You're still with me. Thank you. And let's have a proper chat about this one in the comments, because this Megane is unlike any Megane that has gone before it, and I think it's a really solid effort by Renault. Basics? It's a ground-up electric car. There will be no plug-in hybrids, petrol or diesel. And it's based on the same mechanical bits as the new Nissan Ariya, because Renault and Nissan share things to save money. But that's not to say that this is in any way cheap. There are some extraordinarily cool bits on this car, and that's mainly to do with the lessons that Renault learned from the mega-selling Zoe. Renault has taken all of that experience, all of that data from millions of miles of driving Zoes and applied it to this Megane. Apart from the safety stuff, because even though the Zoes didn't do that well in their latest round of crash safety exams, the Megane is a five-star car and that's a top score. The battery itself is only about that thick, 110 millimetres, which means the Megane isn't actually that high. Oh, and the battery is both liquid heated and cooled to make charging faster and preserve the life of the cells. Like Goldilocks's porridge, they need to be at the perfect temperature. There's also a heat pump to make it more efficient in winter, and the motor, inverter, and the charging system are all much smaller than similar setups from other manufacturers. That means it'll be both more efficient and more economic because it makes absolutely the best use of the electricity that you put into it. Right now, that's super important. And I think it looks just great. Weirdly, it's actually a lot smaller than it looks in pictures. It's actually lower than a Renault Zoe and marginally narrower until you take into account the wing mirrors and then it's wider. It's got big ears. But it is actually quite chunky. Now these wheels are the optional 20s standard or 18s but because they're pushed right out into the corners of the car and because there's this black wheel arch trim and deep body sides it makes the car look quite imposing and chunky. But that's actually a little bit of a visual trick because this car is shorter than a Ford Focus. It's not so much an SUV as a kind of CrossFit hatch. I do like the front. The restyled badge is a big reminder of who makes it. And I think all these lines are quite flowing. That color trim is what you get in the better specified models, by the way, and they call it warm titanium, honestly. There's a contrasting black roof, which you can have in one of three different colors. There's also a hidden rear door handle here which keeps the side profile clean. And then as you move round to the back, there's a very shallow rear windscreen, which if you look, is only the size of my actual hand and a full width rear light bar at the back. It's actually a really handsome design and it looks a lot nicer than when I first saw it online. One detail I really like, these tiny little filigree lines in the rear lights. It's just really neat. It's all good in here too. The imposing bit is this set of screens that's directly in front of me. So you've got an information bit here, that's 12 inches. Then there's another 12 inch portrait screen that's angled quite aggressively towards the driver here, which just looks really good. There's a set of often used buttons underneath, which is really nice. Cheaper versions get a nine inch screen instead of this 12 inches, which I'm not sure how good that'll look. So we'll have to wait and see. Other stuff, you've got kind of an oval squared off steering wheel with paddles for the brake regeneration behind it. The gear shift is column mounted, so it's up here, which means that you get an absolute ton of storage down in the center console here. There's a wireless charging pad just here. Then down here is kind of just a big open space with these configurable dividers, which is really useful. There's a cup holder and then a big deep center pocket in the middle. One thing to note though, behind the wheel, there are four, count them, four different sets of stalks. Now this one is for the radio, which is typical in lots of Renaults. This one is for the windscreen wipers. This one is the gear shift. And then over on the left-hand side here, that's the indicators and the lights. Now I'm not saying it is that confusing, but I have actually put the windscreen wipers on whilst trying to get into reverse twice now. I'm sure that you'd get used to it. There is also some nicely tricked things like a smart rear view mirror. So you flick that and it becomes a camera. And I thought that was just really nice little extra detail. 
But that's until you realize just why you need it, because this rear windscreen is essentially a slot. You need that camera just to see where you're going. I couldn't put my dog in the boot of this car because he'd be massively claustrophobic and probably wet himself. My seating position was really easy to get nicely sorted and generally the materials feel really nice. There's some lovely contrast stitching. There's this wood which is basically laser etched so that's a nice bit of texture and everything feels really nicely put together. You can also option everything made out of 100% recycled materials so you can feel like you're doing your bit. As usual, there's a full suite of driver assistance systems, but the one thing that's been standing out for me is the fact that all of the onboard multimedia is Google powered. Now it's exactly like the system in the Polestar 2, but actually slightly slicker, and it is really good. You can have everything from Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can download different apps. It's really intuitive, it's really clear, it's really slick, and it is really fast. It's one of the best things about this car because it just makes it super convenient super clear i just really enjoy using it it also integrates with the google maps on the sat nav so what this car will actually do is it will do things like tell you how much percentage of battery you've got left in the car it'll suggest convenient charging stops tell you how fast they are and if you pick one of those charging stops it will then either preheat or cool the battery to make sure that it's at optimum temperature for fast charging when you get there honestly I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. It's absolutely brilliant. As far as space goes, there are a few things to talk about. So there's plenty of space for the two front passengers and absolutely no problem. But once you get into the back, it's a little bit more complicated. So that is my driving position up front. And one thing, when I got in here, I had to duck under this header rail, which is actually quite low. And when I'm sat up, it's underneath my eye line, though it is padded. So if I was feeling sleepy, I could have a bit of a kip with my head resting against it. But if you look down here, my feet can't actually get underneath the seat in front the way I sit there. So it feels a little bit more cramped than it is. There is a flat floor and that's brilliant. Although this middle seat is quite tight. So you're not gonna get another adult in there very comfortably. And also this center console sort of pokes into their shins. So even though it feels like there's enough room, it doesn't feel spacious. Certainly not as spacious as some of the other pure electric cars that we've driven. Yeah. The boot is bigger than something like a Nissan Leaf. That's 440 litres, litre fans. And there's a drop bit underneath for cable storage, but no frunk, because the front is where all the electric bits go. It is a practical car for everyday stuff though. Honestly, the driving part is one of the Megane's massive strengths. And it's immediately noticeable, the fact that Renault has done a lot of work in keeping the weight down on this car. They've tried to make everything as light and small and as efficient as possible in terms of battery, motors, inverters, all that kind of stuff. And you really do notice it when you're driving down a twisty road or just the average B road. And especially when you're braking, you notice it on the brakes more than anything else because it's not fighting its mass all of the time. Mind you, I haven't actually been using the foot brake an awful lot. I've been using the brake regeneration and that's accessed by these paddles behind the steering wheel. So on the left hand side, you can increase the brake regen like that and then on the right hand side you can decrease it so you can basically use it like changing down in a car with a manual gearbox so if you're approaching a junction like this you pull the paddle see and you can increase the strength of the regeneration and then it it will do everything from basically freewheeling to one pedal driving and it's supremely well judged and i really like it it's completely intuitive after about two miles the steering is really quite nice. The ride is also really good, though it would be better on the standard 18 inch wheels rather than these massive 20s, which look brilliant. But the problems that I can find with the ride quality are almost entirely down to those 20 inch rims because it's got a slight tendency to grumble. The way that it slightly clomps through a pothole is down to the wheel. I can feel there's a lack of absorption through the tire. Generally, the car rides really well, so it takes big bumps really nicely. The suspension works really well. It's just those big wheels, a little bit more granular. I'd expect smaller wheels to be a lot better. It does make the steering very positive with such big stiff wheels. And generally it's clear and it's accurate, though it is a little bit floaty for my taste. It makes the car feel quite sporty, but I would like a little bit more feel of what the front wheels are doing. 
Now, this is the bigger 60 kilowatt hour battery with 215 brake horsepower, and it is plenty quick enough. It's not exactly a hot hatch, but it gets from zero to 62 miles an hour in about seven and a half seconds, which is more than enough for just keeping up with day-to-day -day traffic. And when you do feel like driving a little bit quicker, it's got a set of driving modes. You access them through this uh, little button here on the bottom of the steering wheel, and you've got comfort, eco, sport, personal. So the personal one is basically you can set your own parameters, comfort is comfort, eco just ekes out the last bit of range from your battery, and sport actually does make quite a bit of difference, like it makes the car feel a lot perkier. Now in a lot of cars it, it doesn't make that much difference, but I've been playing with the brake regen from the paddles, and you can slow the car down into a corner, turn it in, and it's got a little bit of wheel spin, but genuinely I think this might be one of the most fun cars to drive in the sector. It's not horrifically quick, but it definitely works. And again, it's that feeling of lightness. The car feels quite perky. It doesn't feel like it's fighting its mass all the time. And because it's got a good ride, it's got decent grip. Everything seems to work together to make the Megane E-Tech Electric feel more sporty than it should. And yet it's got ride comfort. This is a really well-judged car. It's like the best of all the French stuff. It's also quiet and refined and relaxing. If I put this into comfort mode again, it's very chilled out. Now, Renault's done lots of little tricks, like it's put essentially like a, a sound and vibration deadening duvet between the battery and the metal bits of the chassis. So this car is very quiet, even for an electric car. Everything about this car feels like that Renault has upped the game slightly. Everything is just better, slightly better than all the competition. The Megane has definitely upped its game in this generation and I'm genuinely impressed. It's brilliant. The new Megane will come with two possible battery sizes of 40 kilowatt hours and 60 kilowatt hours like this one. The smaller battery gets up to 186 miles of range on the usual tests and 129 brake horsepower. The bigger power unit, 215 brake horsepower and up to 292 miles. They're both front wheel drive, by the way, and there's no all wheel drive option. If you're a Zoe driver, it's worth remembering that the charge point is no longer in the nose, but here on the right hand side. You can get up to 22 kilowatts of AC charging and 130 kilowatts DC, so as a general rule, the average home wall box will see this bigger battery fully charged in just under 10 hours. 10 to 80% in under 30 minutes on a 150 kilowatt charger or above. A more common 50 kilowatt charger will see 10 to 80% in just over an hour, and that's all fine if not groundbreaking. What's really interesting here is that even though I've been driving this car in quite low temperatures, sort of six to eight degrees Celsius, the Megane Electrics is actually returning really good efficiency figures. So I've been getting between 4.3 and 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Now I've not done a whole heap of motorway work, so that would probably drop it a little bit, but that's really efficient. I did it on my phone and worked it out, and that's roughly equivalent to about 264 miles of real world range, which isn't that far off what Renault is quoting. And that's really comforting. You know, it's cold and it's winter and the car's getting very close to what the WLTP figures are. And something that I think gets missed a lot with electric cars is it's not enough for them to just be electric. They still have to be efficient. So they have to be efficient with the energy that gets put into them. Because don't forget, the more efficient an electric car is, the more range you get for the same amount of charge and the more environmentally friendly it is overall. It's not enough just to be electric. You've got to be efficient as well. So the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric, I actually think this is pretty much spot on. It looks great, it drives well, it's got a really nice interior and it would appear to be very, very efficient. It's not dirt cheap, but then I don't think any pure electric car really is, and it is priced well in the face of the competition. Would I have one rather than a VW ID3 or Kia e Nero? Well, yes. Yes, I think I would. Although there is a new Nero EV coming, which should provide stiffer competition. Oh my goodness, we're being all definitive and consumer advicey. That's never going to catch on. If you need to know anything else about the Megane E-Tech Electric or any of its competition like the VW ID3 or Kia e Nero, then please do log on to electrifying.com where we'll attempt to furnish you with everything you need to know.